Hey, my name's John Pinner. I and my team organised PyCon UK and Europython 2009-2010 we did. One of our team members is Richard, who's going to tell us all about DNS and Twisted. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, so um, my name's Richard Wall. Um, I'll start by telling you a little bit about me. I don't want to spend too long. Um, I'm a Python programmer from the UK. Um, as John says, I'm involved in the PyCon UK conference as a, an occasional speaker, and um, my most important job there is to organize the conference dinner table plan. I run that, uh, I maintain the table plan software. I'm also uh, an enthusiast, a real enthusiast for Twisted, which is a, a framework which hopefully you've all heard of. It's one of the oldest um, Python frameworks. And I have become, over the last year, a contributor and a core, a core contributor. I suppose I could call myself a core contributor. And I guess the de facto maintainer of Twisted Names, which is the uh, component of Twisted, which um, I'm going to be talking to you today about. Uh, and I'm currently working in uh, uh, Bristol in the UK for a company called Cluster HQ, uh, where we're working um, on some software to uh, manage the deployment and the, uh, the state of um, Docker containers. And it's a really interesting open source project that we're working on called Flocker. So you should look that up if you're interested in any of those technologies. I'm working on that with some of the Twisted founders, which is super exciting for me. Okay, um, well, I haven't got long for this talk, and I, when I did this in, in the UK last year, I over, over underestimated how, how long it was going to take, and so I've cut out a lot of stuff. This is going to be a much shorter version if anyone saw the talk in the UK. Um, I'm going to talk less about myself, less about the history of Twisted, and more about the technology in, in Twisted Names, and also the project that I've been working on um, uh, recently uh, to implement eDNS and DNSSEC support in Twisted. Um, I'm going to start with an overview of DNS. Well, a very short overview. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, I'll give you a tour of the components in Twisted Names. Um, I'll hopefully give you some interesting examples, some, some quite, quite interesting examples. Um, I'll give you a status report on this project, and then I hope to have some time at the end to answer any questions. I hope there will be some questions. So, I had planned to give a sort of uh, an overview of the domain name system, but um, I don't think I'm going to have time, and I don't think I need to anyway, because you've probably already been to a talk on Wednesday by Lynn Root, uh, who explained really clearly about the domain name system and its... Um, its structure, its operation, and the terminology, uh, and I think some of the software that you may be familiar with for serving in, uh, and sending uh, DNS requests. So she did a better, much better job than I probably can at explaining it, and so what I'm going to say is you should just go and watch her talk on YouTube. It's a great talk. And I, I didn't make it to the talk. I wish I had been able to, but uh, it's, it's, I watched it last night, and, uh, and I'm glad she did it, because it means I can get to the interesting bits, uh, the twisted bits that I want to talk about. So I'm going to skip this, skip this, skip this, skip this, skip this, skip this. And somewhere, I might talk, a, I might talk briefly about the software that you may be, uh, you may be familiar with. And just as a contrast to the twisted name system, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, so probably you're all, you're all familiar with Bind, which is the uh, original DNS server. I, I think that's true. I'm tr it's true to say it's the original DNS server. It's, um, it's an authoritative DNS server and a recursive DNS server and a forwarding DNS server and all sorts of other gubbins that are, are mixed in with it. And that's part of its problem. It tries to do too much. It's feature-packed, but it's overcomplicated and it's, it's full of vulnerabilities. Uh, this idea of one binary to, uh, to, to satisfy all the different DNS requirements, DNS server requirements is a mistake, which has been uh, learned and uh, implemented better in another piece of software called PowerDNS. So if, I, if you're using Bind, then I recommend you go and look at PowerDNS, which is a much more modern, uh, much better designed, um, a much more secure uh, DNS server. 
And it's, it's actually more powerful than Bind in a way because it has a much cleaner way of uh, interfacing with a database backend, for example. And it also uh, splits the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the duty of uh, authoritative server from the duty of recursive DNS server, which is important to avoid um, cache poisoning attacks. Other servers you may have come across are Unbound and NSD. I mention those because they are written by uh, uh, they're written by an organisation that I've been involved with with this project that I'm going to tell you about, NLNet Labs. And again, they are much more modern, um, much more secure DNS servers. Uh, dedicated to Unbound is dedicated to doing uh, uh, to answering recursive requests. NSD is dedicated to answering authoritative requests. Okay, so. Let's now get to the, uh, the subject of this talk, Twisted Names. So, Twisted Names is, is kind of as old as Twisted itself. It's, uh, it's celebrating its 13th birthday this year. Um, it probably started life, as you may or may not be able to see from this, this uh, check-in, this is the first uh, change set where Twisted Names was first, first landed it was probably introduced as a sort of demo of a new of the what was then new UDP transport uh, um, facility in Twisted. Um, I did a little bit of digging and found the the commits from the beginning of Twisted Names Life and the, some of the newer commits uh, that I've been working on and, and uh, Julian's worked on a bit. I see. Um, so you can see it was uh, originally written by a guy called Moshi Zadka back in 2001. And that was in the good old days that when Twisted had a kind of Wild West development process. Everyone was just committing randomly to trunk. Um, and I guess they, didn't, they hadn't yet implemented what is now called the ultimate quality um, development system, which is a, a talk in its own right. Uh, it's a way of it's a way it's the way we develop in Twisted. It's the way of developing in branches and ensuring that every change that gets merged to Trunk has been code reviewed, uh, that it's fully tested, that the code is fully covered, and that there's an audit trail showing uh, between the ticket and the code that lands in Trunk. But you should go and read about the ultimate quality development system if you haven't already. Uh, so, uh, Twisted Names was, uh, it was, it was kind of actively maintained to start with, but then over the years it kind of, I think it's true to say it's been neglected a bit, um, and then I started getting involved about two years ago, and I had a background in DNS, so I thought that's, that's part of Twisted where I could help out. Um, and I've been um, busily um, updating the documentation, um, adding test coverage, um, adding some new examples to uh, uh, demonstrating how to use Twisted Names. And you'll find all of those on the, uh, on the new uh, Read the Docs uh, documentation website. I'll link to that in a minute. So, yeah, like the rest of Twisted, the Twisted Names package is really well tested. It's got um, comprehensive unit tests which are uh, run using a tool called Trial, which is a great test runner. Um, it, then the, the, the unit tests in Twisted Names, if you care to read the code, and probably not the most sophisticated unit tests in the world, but that's a reflection of the way these testing techniques improve over time. Twisted is, is, a, is a, as I said earlier, it's, a, it's over 13 years old. So if you, if you do go and start hacking on it, you'll find that there are bits of it which are kind of hard to read, hard to look at without... Uh, yeah, hard to look at without uh, bursting into tears. But uh, then again, you have to recognize this, this, this history of the project. And it's actually quite interesting to see how particular developers who have been with Twisted from the very start have, have changed their ideas and their approaches to things like testing. I think that would be another interesting talk in its own right. It's interesting from the point of view of a new contributor who has to deal with this old style code and the new style code and understand how to, how, what's the current best way of doing this, uh, developing for Twisted. Um, so we've got plenty of unit tests and we've got uh, reasonable coverage of the code. Some of the, some of the modules, uh, I don't know whether you can see it on the slide, are, are not very well covered, but those are areas which I'm working on now. Uh, uh, modules such as the authoritative DNS server uh, and the secondary DNS server are not particularly well covered. And in fact, that's, um, 
that's sort of reared its rug ugly head uh, lately in a bug that's been discovered in the secondary name server uh, in the latest release of Twisted. Um, it's partly down to a lack of test coverage. This bug wasn't, um, wasn't noticed earlier, and it's partly down to the, poor de the old style design of that uh, part of the, uh, of the package. But hopefully I and others are going to uh, improve that over time. Um, Twisted Names wasn't particularly well documented, but that's improving. As I said earlier, I've, I've been working quite hard on improving the documentation for Twisted Names. And Twisted as a whole is better documented these days. You can, you can go, like most other projects these days, and, and read the docs on Read the Docs. And it's nicely presented and nicely indexed and easily searchable. So I recommend, uh, if, uh, if you're interested, that you go and read the, the documentation for Twisted Names and for the rest of Twisted, because it's, it's much easier these days to navigate the documentation. So, uh, how am I doing for time? I'm running out of time. I'm going over. To, I'm, I'm running out of time. So let's crack on. We'll have a look now at the, the the different modules in Twisted Names. I'm going to start at the lowest level and work up. The, like like everywhere in Twisted, there are layers of abstraction, layers upon layers and on layers. And uh, we'll start at the bottom and give some examples of how you can use these low-level APIs. And then later we'll see some of the higher-level abstractions. Sorry. So let's start with the Twisted Names DNS. Uh, module. Now this contains protocol, protocol level APIs, uh, representations of the DNS records, uh, representations of um, DNS messages, uh, routines for, um, for uh, serializing and deserializing uh, these messages from the, from the wire. And it also is the, it's in this module that you'll find the protocol implementations, both for UDP and TCP, because DNS operates over both of those transports. So we've got a little example here, which I'll try and talk you through. Can you see that? Let me try and zoom in a bit. This is, this is reveal.js, and I'm not sure whether it's going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Can everyone see that? Great, OK. So um, what we're looking at here, uh, there's, there's a couple of things I need to explain. Um, we have got, first of all, let's start at the bottom and look at the, the, the last line, which is task.react. Now, if you've used Twisted before, uh, you may not have come across this, um, this um, API, but this is a new way uh, for you to start the reactor for a, a short-lived Twisted program. And, and what it does, it, uh, it supplies a method, you supply it with a function that you want to run, a function which must return a deferred. And task react will take that function and supply it with the reactor, uh, run your function, and then wait for the deferred that it returns to fire. And upon firing, task react will then tear down the reactor, um, take care of, uh, of stopping the services in the right order, and it will log any errors that haven't been handled on that deferred. So if we, if we then move up to the main method, we can see that having supplied the reactor, we're instantiating a, a DNS datagram protocol. So this is, this is, in this example, we're only going to be, this, this uh, DNS client example, we're only going to be dealing with UDP. And we instantiate the protocol, and then we pass that to React to listen UDP on port zero, which means any high ephemeral port. And because this is UDP, uh, we don't have any connections. So we have to, uh, so it may look odd to be in a client list, uh, you're calling a method called listen, but we are going to send a UDP datagram, and we have to be listening for the response. Whereas in TCP, the operating system would set up the connection for you, and you wouldn't have to choose the ephemeral port that the uh, response comes in on. Uh, so, so we listen, we listen on uh, UDP port XYZ, and then we send a query using the protocol. Uh, using, we, we call proto.query to send our DNS query uh, to, in this case, the Google DNS servers. And then when that query uh, has been answered, uh, we're going to print the result, and that's by way of a, the, adding a callback to the deferred returned by protocol.query. Uh, again, I, 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 was, I, I sometimes think we should get, start every talk with an introduction to deferreds, but um, I guess everyone's heard it, and more people are 
these days are familiar with the idea because it's now part of JavaScript, I think. So, yeah, when, when, the, when the answer comes back, we simply uh, we take the result and we take it... Uh, the result is a message, a DNS message, which I'll, I'll explain in a little bit more detail later, but a message has, a, has three attributes. It has an answers attribute, an authority attribute, and an additional attribute. And those represent the three... Um, the three categories of records that might be returned by a DNS server. And in this case, all we're doing is printing out the answers uh, returned by the DNS server. And in particular, we're returning, we're going to print out the payload, which is uh, the, 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 either the A, in this case, the quad A record, it might be the A record or the MX record. We're not interested in printing out the header information, which wraps around that payload. And so I'll, I'll show, you the, show you the output. Oh, <laughs> I'm running out of time rapidly. Okay, so we, we, we've got an answer from the server, a quad A, one single quad A record. Now, let's quickly move on uh, to the next example. So that was a client. The next example is a server. And uh, in this case, it's quite similar, but we, we instantiate the datagram protocol, this time with a controller, which um, takes care of handling the... Uh, the, the uh, the, the, the query which comes into our server. And when a query is rece received by the protocol on port 10, uh, 10,053, um, our protocol then calls out to the controller and calls its message received method. And it's the message received method on the controller which is responsible for, um, for uh, constructing an answer to that message. So this is how we write low level servers in, uh, low level DNS servers in Twisted. And in this case, we're just going to res respond with a canned uh, A record with a, with a fixed IP address. So hopefully that makes sense. I, I haven't got time. I'd like to uh, uh, go into it in more detail, but I haven't got time. There's the, uh, there's the, uh, the server running, and there's us uh, issuing a request to it using dig. OK. So now those are low-level APIs. If we move up now to twistednames.client, this is a much higher level API, a much more friendly way of interacting with twisted names. And in this example, we're going to, use, we're going to introduce a couple of new concepts. We're going to use twisted names to look up concurrently the, um, the reverse DNS records for a whole class C network. Um, and so you can see in our main method uh, that we are constructing a list of all the IP addresses in a, in a, in a slash 24 network using um, a really useful module called NetAdder, which does all the, um, the construction of those reverse DNS names for us. I think, there was, um, I think there was a lightning talk on it yesterday. So I recommend that module. And for each of those reverse DNS names, we're going to call client.lookup pointer. And client has a has a, a series of these lookup methods, one for each type of DNS record that you can receive from a DNS server. It doesn't have all of them, but we're working on implementing some of the missing ones, but it has a lookup method for almost every common DNS um, type. And so we construct a series of, a, a list of deferreds, all of them in flight, uh, and all of them uh, are then added to what's called a deferred list. Now a deferred list is a, a really useful um, API for collecting uh, the responses to a, a list of deferreds, and then it uh, fires its callback when all of the deferreds have themselves fired or, or failed. And so in, when we handle the results in this example, we are looping through the results, checking whether the result was a success or a failure, and if it was a, if it was a success, we print the, um, we again print the payload, and we also print a summary, um, summarizing how many of the requests were answered successfully and how many of them uh, were, were not answered, either because the record didn't exist or perhaps the, uh, the, the query timed out. And so the, the results to that are as follows. So you can see it all happens rather quickly and um, because everything is happen happening concurrently. So that's a real advantage of using Twisted for this sort of work. I might skip now to a better example of that, uh, one which follows on 
from uh, Lynn's uh, talk uh, on Wednesday. So let me, let me quickly summarize some of the other modules. We have um, interested, we have the modules for, for creating DNS servers. I had an example of that, and it's really easy to use because there's a twisted DNS plugin for the twisty um, uh, uh, command, which comes with twisted. And so you should explore that and explore all the options that you have uh, using that command. Uh, twisted itself runs its twistedmatrix.com. That domain is actually served from, from a twisted DNS server. So it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty stable, and it's, um, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a fully featured DNS server, but it's good enough for some cases. Um, you can see that when you start the server, it logs to standard out, and that we can query that server once it's started up. Um, we also have an authoritative server, and it's interesting, but I haven't got time to go into it, that you can load a, a DNS zone based by defining it as a Python module. And so it, here we have a Python module with um, uh, describing the zone, but um, the, the, and, and the, the objects that you see there are all um, globals which are imported at the time that this module is evaluated by twisted names. It's quite a clever mechanism, but um, you should look into that too. It's an interesting piece of code. And again, there's the example of how it runs. And again, these examples are all on the documentation, the twisted documentation site, so I recommend you go and read those. Uh, there's a bunch of other modules which I'll have to skip through. Common contains some helpers and, and some, uh, some APIs common to all of the twisted clients and servers. Resolve, I won't go into. Cache is about caching the re responses to, uh, to queries. Root is about doing recursive DNS resolution, which Lynn talked about in her talk. Uh, secondary is about transferring zones and serving them authoritatively uh, from another authoritative server, which some of you may be familiar with. And the point I wanted to make by describing all of these is that these, all of these building blocks can be put together in interesting ways. And, um, I've done a couple of examples of this on the website. For example, you could create very easily using the low-level APIs a, a module or a, a script for, test, for compliance testing of DNS servers or clients because you have complete control over the, um, the, the flags and, the, and the, the payloads that you put into messages. So it's easy to construct um, uh, non-compliant messages to see how DNS servers respond to those, or it's easy to, to, um, it's easy to see how clients respond to non-compliant responses from servers. So that's a, that's a good use of uh, these building blocks. We use, the, we use Twisted at work for, uh, Twisted Names at work for functional testing. So we have a bunch of code which does um, DNS lookups, and we want to, in our tests, supply canned responses to those DNS lookups. And it's very easy, using Twisted, to Set up, a, set up a, a lightweight DNS server and then tear it down at the end of the test. It would be really easy to set up a database-backed DNS server or a, a DNS server which looked up its data from a REST API, for example. Or it'd be easy you to combine these with other, part, other components in Twisted, like the web module or the uh, LDAP module, uh, to look up DNS records from an LDAP um, database or to, uh, to control and manage the DNS records in your server using a REST API. So, now let me see if I can quickly show you, I'll finish off with a quick example, a more complicated example of uh, using twisted names. So in Lynn's talk, I, I, it was really interesting, is that there's a tool called DNS Map, which um, is a tool for... Um, for brute forcing a zone, for, for guessing which names may be in a zone, a DNS zone. And it does that using a dictionary of words or co common subdomains. And as, as you said in your talk, Lynn, that's a, it's, it, does, it does it in series, so it's quite, quite, a slow, it's quite slow to complete, because there's, there's about a thousand words in its dictionary. So I thought it'd be interesting to write, a tool, write the same tool in Twisted, because it can do all of these lookups concurrently. So this is this is how DNS the DNS map, the original DNS map is documented. You pass it a domain name, and you pass it you can pass it a list of words, which it will then look up each of those words as a subdomain of the supplied uh, parent domain. But as you can see, it is quite slow. So I started this going against Spotify.com, and 48 seconds later, it had only reached G. So it was going to take forever. 
Now, I want to compare that to another example, the example I wrote, which um, I don't know whether I've actually given you the link, but I've put all this code on my uh, GitHub page. I, I've got the link at the end of my talk. And in this example, we are, um, we're actually sending all of our requests concurrently, but in, uh, not, not, we're not sending a thousand requests at a time. We're using some, another interesting part of Twisted called the cooperator, uh, the, t the cooperator um, API in, in the task module. And what we can do using that is to limit the concurrency so that we can say there's only ever a hundred in-flight DNS requests at a time. So we're not going to overwhelm the DNS server that we're querying. Um, I haven't implemented in this the, the, the random timeouts that DNS map actually puts in, in between its requests, so it's not quite the same. But uh, if I show you the results, in this case, it's looked up all, um, it's about a thousand subdomains in two and a half seconds. So that's a good demonstration of the power of uh, Twisted and the power of uh, the, um, the APIs and the, and the way that it can, it can efficiently process, uh, efficiently send out requests and process the responses. All this code is on my um, GitHub page. Now, I think I've run out of time, so I, won't, I'm, I'm, I wanted to talk about my project. I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm going to be sprinting at the end, uh, tomorrow at least, on Twisted. So if any of you are interested in um, helping out or learning about the development process, if any of you are DNS experts and want to help me with my project, then I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's all about eDNS, DNSSEC. I've got funding, uh, so you might get paid for it. Uh, I've made modest progress, and I think that's the summary of this talk. It, it's the summary of what it's, it's how I wanted this talk to be, but I haven't had time to cover it all. Um, so, those are the links. Those are the links to the documentation. That's the GitHub link to the examples in my talk, if you want to investigate those. If you, I'll, put this, I'll put these on GitHub as well, and I'll link to these from Twitter or somewhere. I'll make them available on the conference website. Have I got any time for questions? No. If there's any questions, catch up with me afterwards, and I'd be delighted to talk to you about it.